In this video, we're going to talk about the conservation of momentum. Conservation momentum applies to situations when two objects collide or separate from each other, like in a billiard game. The law of conservation momentum says that the total initial momentum of objects before they collide is going to be equal to the total final momentum of the objects after they collide. This is under the condition that no external forces act on the system. Now when we talk about a system, we're talking about the objects that are going to be colliding or going to be separating from each other. So in the example of two billiard balls hitting each other, this is the system. And so no forces outside of the system can interact with what's inside the system. The most common situation involving conservation momentum is going to apply when objects collide with each other. Although conservation momentum is also going to apply to objects that start together and then separate, like a bullet inside of a gun. Before the bullet is fired from the gun, the total momentum of these two objects is going to be zero. So if we take this bullet, put it right inside, let's go ahead and prove this. Momentum is equal to m times v, where m stands for mass and v stands for velocity. Now we have two objects here. We have both the bullet and the gun. So if we add their momentums together, it should be equal to zero. Let me prove to you that they are equal to zero. Now the mass of the bullet and the mass of the gun aren't really the important thing here. The important thing is the velocity or the speed of these two objects. Before the bullet is fired, the speed of both of them will be zero. So if I want to prove this mathematically, I've expanded the equation here. I know that P, momentum, is equal to m times v. So I've taken the momentum of the bullet and I've expanded it to include the mass and the velocity. I've just indicated that this is referring to the bullet with the subscript b. And then I have mass and vo velocity of the gun over here. And so when I plug in the numbers here, zero velocity and zero velocity, we of course get zero momentum total. Okay, so law of conservation momentum says that after the bullet is fired, and leaves the gun, the total momentum of both the bullet and the gun must equal zero as well. It says that the before momentum must equal the after momentum. So how could this be possible if the bullet is flying extremely quickly away from the gun? Well, let's add some masses to the bullet and the gun. Okay, the average rifle weighs about 2.38 kilograms, and the bullet weighs about 0 0.0026 kilograms, or in other words, 2.6 grams. Now, a bullet can travel at some pretty great velocities. Let's say that our bullet is traveling at 378 meters per second. We can calculate the momentum of the bullet using the equation P equals mv. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers here. And so we have mass times velocity, and we end up with momentum of 0 0.983 kilograms times meters per second. So that is the momentum of the bullet. Again, this is as the bullet here is flying out of the gun, it's traveling with that much momentum. Now, according to the law of conservation of mass, the initial momentum, which is right here, it's zero, so we'll call this initial it's going to have to be equal to the total momentum of the after, or the final. So down here we're calculating the final momentum. This is the total of the bullet and the gun. So that means if the bullet is traveling at uh, positive, you can see that this is positive momentum here, 0.983, that means the momentum of the gun has to be negative 0.983. Because if we add them together, they're going to equal zero. And so that would obey the law of conservation momentum. Now, when a bullet is fired from a gun, there is something called recoil. And so the bullet comes flying out very quickly, and the gun will kind of travel backwards a little bit. And so if you're holding it and shooting it, you'd feel the kick from the rifle as it bounced back. We can actually calculate how quickly the rifle would kick back. The missing part that we have here is the velocity of the gun. But we can solve this because we know the mass of the gun and we know the momentum because the momentum is exactly equal to the momentum of the bullet. We should see a much smaller 
velocity than the bullet because the mass is so much greater. So let's calculate that. Here's our equation for momentum. We're gonna, I'm going to rearrange it to solve for velocity. And now I can go ahead and plug in my numbers. And again, this is calculating for the gun. So I have the momentum of the gun divided by the mass of the gun. And I get a velocity of 0 0.347 meters per second. And so there's the velocity of the gun. We can see it's very, very small. And so what we just calculated here is the after momentum. And again, if we add up the momentum of the gun, here's the momentum of the gun, and here's the momentum of the bullet. If we add them together, we get zero. Okay, so here's what we can conclude. When we're dealing with conservation momentum, we have a general equation that we can use. So here's what conservation momentum looks like for the example we just saw with the bullet and the gun. We have the total momentum before is going to be equal to the total momentum after. And what we usually do for indicating that we have the final or the after momentum is we just use these prime symbols here to show that that's the after. So we have the before and the after. And to make this a little more general, we can use m1v1 plus m2v2 is equal to m1v1 prime plus m2v2 prime. And that's conservation of momentum.